We developed the rotavirus vaccines um, starting in the 1980s with an understanding that in the United States, this was a major cause of diarrhea, resulting in about half a million visits to a physician, about 250,000 visits to emergency room, and nearly 50,000 hospitalizations every year. So we needed the vaccine in the U.S. Across the world, however, it actually causes a half million deaths each year. Uh, that's three times the number of deaths each year for measles across the world. Um, in um, uh, developing countries, this is a major cause of childhood mortality. Um, while we develop vaccines that work well in the U.S. and fit into our infant schedule at two, four, and two, four, and six months of age, um, they're very expensive and difficult to use in third world countries. In fact, 15% of the disease of rotavirus in third world countries occurs in the first three months of life. So what we end up having is a vaccine that's very poorly adopted across the world. Perhaps only 6% of children across the world get it. Um, works well here in the U.S., but doesn't cover infants across developing countries and doesn't get into them as early as it needs to to prevent uh, death and disease. There's several reasons why worldwide this is actually a cause of death, whereas here in this country it's a cause of emergency room visits. First of all, is just the nutritional status of the child at the time they get the diarrhea. Uh, rotavirus diarrhea in developing countries causes more death in part because the children are, are less nourished and at more risk for dehydration. A second concern is the immunity that they carry from their parents is not as effective because of maternal um, uh, transfer immunity depends on her nutritional status as well. Um, frankly, there's probably other things that we don't yet understand. What we do know, though, is across uh, Africa and India, um, this is a major cause of morbidity and mortality, and our current vaccines are not really available to most who need it and wouldn't be available at the time they need it. We need a vaccine that we really can get into babies that's effective at their age. We found that actually in this large randomized clinical trial where 500 children received the vaccine and 500 received placebo, that we could, one, uh, reduce the risk of the disease by about 60% uh, across the serotypes uh, caused, uh, prevented by the vaccine. Uh, this is a major breakthrough. Uh, no one has yet shown an efficacious uh, vaccine that works in uh, newborn babies, uh, and we were able to demonstrate that, that we could give a dose uh, uh, in the first month of life and then again in the second life and really reduce the risk of disease by rotavirus uh, by 60%. We're looking for um, vaccines that work in situations that are, are, are practically represent developing countries with problems with nutrition and problems with um, uh, uh, other aspects that may interfere with uh, vaccine response. Sixty percent is far better than what we have otherwise, which is zero percent. Um, we actually work in a world where many of our vaccines are working at about that range. That is, unfortunately, where we are with our pertussis vaccine that we use in this country. That is where we are with the flu vaccine that we use in this country. So as much as 60 percent is not 100 percent, it's far better than what we are otherwise left with. The next step is for us to do a larger trial with this information to get the funding uh, to uh, test approximately 10, the vaccine in 10,000 babies in developing countries for proof of, va uh, of safety and proof of generalizability. This study isn't funded by a commercial enterprise. This study is being funded by a not-for-profit organization dedicated to creating a sustainable vaccine manufacturer across the developing countries. International Medica Foundation is, is partnering with Mayo Clinic and other groups to develop the capacity to make an effective neonatal vaccine against rotavirus, not here in this country, but in every developing country. The next step is to take this positive proof of efficacy, expand it, demonstrate to developing countries that this is safe and effective as a neonatal vaccine, and then move towards a sustainable capacity to make this vaccine in those countries.